Hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Um, today, my topic is related to Apple's Wi-Fi subsystem buzzing and uh, kernel vulnerability research. The title is Diving to Apple IO uh, 80211 Family Volume 2. Um, my name is Wang Yu from Soumao Tech, an enterprise data security company. Um, I can be reached through this email address. Today's presentation uh, can be regarded as the second part of my Black Hat USA topic in 2020, um, which can be found here. Um, if, if you haven't heard of this topic before, don't worry. Uh, I will first introduce the subsystem and quickly go through the previous work. So um, the Wi-Fi subsystem. First, let's go back to two years ago. One day in January, I found an interesting thing. A driver called Airport Broadcom NIC disappeared from the system. So with the deepening of research, I found that starting from iOS 13 and macOS 10.15 Catalina, Apple refactored the, the architecture of the uh, 80211 Wi-Fi client extensions and renamed the new generation to Family version 2. Um, behind the network architecture refactoring, I think uh, it, it is a change of concept. One of the goals is to upgrade from basic network communication capabilities to support trusted privacy sharing among all types of Apple devices. Here is a brief uh, architecture diagram from daemon user mode framework to family extensions, plugin and the low level extensions. Uh, we can see the changes between version one and version two. For example, here, um, there's no more airport uh, Broadcom serious ex extensions. And we are security researchers. So two years ago, uh, my work also included an early agent of a uh, plugin framework um, a single code coverage analysis tool and a Kmon based uh, kernel ad address sanitizer solution. As a result of the work, kernel vulnerabilities I, I, I found can be classified into several types, like vulnerability affecting only V1 uh, and only V2 and both V1 and V2. In specific cases, there are some vulnerabilities. I have analysis in detail but others that I cannot disclose because they are, haven't been fixed before Black Hat USA 2020. Um, these vulnerabilities are found in various components among, uh, mentioned ab above. For example, uh, 2020-9832 is in the family extension, while 9833 is in the underlying driver. And two years have passed. Let's return to uh, 2022, uh, all the previous vulnerability have been fixed and the overall security of the operating system has been improved. Mac OS Big Sur, Monterey, Ventura has been released and the era of Apple Silicon has arrived. But I still have a lot of questions such as uh, family version two has been reflected again and the name has been changed back to IO80211 family. So what happened behind this? And how to identify the new attack surfaces? What else can be improved in security engineering? And most importantly, can we still find uh, new high quality kernel vulnerabilities? Um, yeah, please allow me throw out quick answers to these questions. Change is the only consistent and domain knowledge is very important. For security engineering, to be honest, too many areas can be improved. And for vulnerability hunting, I would say, uh, yes, definitely. So here we go. The improvement of the new generation funding framework begins uh, with attack surfaces identification. My first demand is actually very simple. I'd like to change various settings of the network while sending and receiving data. Uh, then uh, such interface uh, should at least include, um, uh, to me, uh, at least include traditional BSD, IO control, IO kits, 
connect the core method uh, serials and uh, uh, six control interfaces, packet sending and receiving, and, and network setting interfaces. As for um, network interface itself, uh, we will refer to them in the following slides. Uh, by the way, an interesting topic is that we should try to fuzz uh, the high level and the low level interface at the same time. I have a good case two years ago for, for, for this uh, Mac OS Bluetooth HCI. Um, I can call the, the interface provided by the Bluetooth framework but talking directly with the kernel means that I can bypass the checks and the restrictions from user mode. Uh, I mean, sending uh, raw data to firmware directly. Um, here I listed some latest cases. The XNU8020 uh, branch is not on Apple's official GitHub, but it is important. Uh, in the branch, we can see the new uh, for example, Nexus IO control interface. Mm -hmm. Apple also has a, a, a module called Nexus. Uh, in addition, the, the 2080 branch contains a lot of Skywork subsystem source code, such as uh, here, uh, sys control registration. Um, so we can uh, extend our fuzzing framework based on the, this domain knowledge. The demand too is about the interface integration. I'd like to uh, switch the status or working mode of the kernel state machine randomly for different network interfaces. Reverse engineering shows uh, that a large of number, uh, a large number of interfaces support different subsystems or states at the same time. This also leads to the next uh, uh, demand. I need to figure out and track which interfaces are triggered and anal analysis the, the code coverage rate. Uh, but I, I actually don't want to slow down the kernel. So kernel in life hook based solution is acceptable, acceptable to me at this stage. And uh, um, there are some default interfaces in the system. Um, have you a uh, fuzzing program talked to them before? If the answer is no, I think it is a time to upgrade the, the fuzzer. Um, for example, uh, Ethernet zero is the most common one. AP one, uh, AP is short for access point, uh, and AWDR is short for Apple Wireless Direct Link. So uh, they are all our targets. The next part is about uh, XNU test cases. Uh, which can be from here. I listed some of them like NetAgent, NetBridge. Um, if you haven't read these test cases before, I highly uh, recommend you to do so, as they contain potential attack surface. So far, the, the new generation of Apple um, 80211 fuzzing framework integrates more than 40 net network interfaces and uh, attack surfaces. One thing I want to uh, mention is that is the more attack surfaces covered during each, uh, each test is better. Um, I found that this is not the case. Uh, when they are uh, mending random parameters, the result is not as good as expected. So, uh, so summary number one, uh, for for attack surface and domain knowledge, uh, we need to uh, accumulate as much domain knowledge as possible by learning XNU source code, documents, and test cases. But after we, we build the fuzzer, uh, for each round, I think we should randomly select two or three interface units and uh, test them as fully as possible. The next part is related to kernel debugging. Sometimes we have to rely on the, the power of remote kernel debug, debugger because the information provided uh, in the panic log is often not helpful in finding the root cause. Variable values sometimes require dynamic analysis. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a vulnerability I discovered last week on Apple Silicon M2 uh, macOS Ventura. Uh, build number is uh, uh, 22A5311F. 
uh, it's a memory corruption uh, issue. Um, I have a more detailed picture, but uh, the, the, the ARM instruction, but never mind. Uh, the, the, the ARM instruction and the call stack here are uh, actually have no valuable information. Without the help of LLDB debugger, there's probably no answer. But on Apple Silicon platform, we lack official support. The KDK document says um, Apple Silicon does not support active kernel debugging. Um, we cannot set breakpoints, uh, continue code execution, step in, step over code. This means that we need the help of third party debugging solutions like Asahi Linux. So here is the, the summary of part two. Um, yeah, we, we need the help of, uh, of third party solutions for Apple Silicon platform. And the, the previous panic picture is a, it's a typical case of corruption. So we need, we also need kernel address and Tizer's help. Uh, we even need to implement a uh, Carson-like solution to dynamically monitor sp uh, special features of third-party closed source kernel extensions. Um, another thing I'd like to discuss is that uh, we have to make some fixes because sometimes the building tools or, or kernel KDKs don't work very well. This is a, uh, one of the problem I have uh, encountered. Since XNU 7195, a function called console IO alert has been introduced into the kernel. Um, this is uh, this hardcore uh, function will check whether the system issue console IO in case of uh, interrupt the disable context. On Windows platforms, such blue screen of death can be uh, classified as uh, IO can, uh, IOQR errors uh, because we cannot access the pageable data at dispatch level. However, the building cars and kernel will always issue such IO requests so that uh, we cannot use the kernel debugger. And uh, yeah, and and no one complains about such problems on the internet. Uh, me either. So so it seems that we, we all fix this kind of bugs silently. And uh, four years ago, I open sourced a Mac OS project named the Kima. I used the uh, kernel inline hook engine to implement a simple uh, Carson and code coverage. Uh, an analysis solution. This time, I, I have ported the Kmon uh, and the kernel in life and kernel in life engine to uh, Apple Silicon platforms. With Kmon's help, I, I believe we can do more. So here is a summary of uh, part number three. Um, yeah, sometimes we, we have to do fixes because uh, the building uh, kernels or tools don't work very well. Mm, the last part I want to mention is uh, 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 in this section is about the Apple SDK building and the third party tools. Apple SDK contain many useful information such as Wi-Fi related uh, head files and, uh, and data structures, um, which will save a lot of time for reverse engineering. Uh, in addition, uh, many interesting command line tools are, are built in the macOS operating system, such as Airport and the uh, uh, Skywalk Control. Uh, you know, they are all uh, potential targets. By the way, uh, the, the Wi-Fi developer community has been maintaining the uh, interface and the feature list. Um, and I think we should contribute to the, the latest kernel changes to the community. Uh, when we have time. Uh, last time I I reversed the uh, uh, interface like uh, this one, Sky uh, Skywalk Link uh, state. And uh, this time, for example, the 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 A one uh, A four remote camera state is the latest change. Yeah, so far we have uh, discussed uh, four accepts um, about network interface and uh, attack surfaces about static analysis, uh, static dynamic analysis method, quicking tools, 
and the, and the, the rest. If we put everything together, uh, we will get a roadmap for building a new generation of Wi-Fi cluster. So this is a, a overall uh, architecture of the system from user mode to kernel mode, from um, high level interface to, to low level interface uh, and attack surfaces, from target to uh, host the machine. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big picture. Yeah, and uh, I have a uh, short video. Um, I will show you how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a video. Um, on the left is the is a target machine, and uh, on the right side is the host machine. They are connected by a uh, sound port three uh, to Ethernet adapter. The And the, uh, the the operating system's version is um, uh, Mac OS Ventura. Uh, build number is uh, 22A5311F. Uh, the latest one when I made this video. Um, and then let me run the run my buzzer uh, here. And uh, the kernel crashes and uh, imme immediately and uh, interrupts to the debugger. Yeah, and the CPU goes crazy. Um, yeah, this is uh, one of my zero day vulnerability. But the information here is, is useless. Uh, don't, don't be worried. Okay, let's back to the slides. Um, in the next section, uh, uh, let's say, um, what surprise we have this time? We apologize for the interruption. Uh, please bear with us. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see my screen? Uh, okay, uh, so let, let me continue. Okay, um, th this is some of the kernel vulnerability I have reported, and uh, some of which have been uh, assigned to CV IDs, like uh, this one, uh, 32837, we will say it later. Uh, the vulnerabilities, uh, CV 2020, 98, 99, and uh, 2020, 113, haven't been fixed before Black Hat USA 2020s. So, so I cannot share their details two years ago. Since these two kernel vulnerabilities are very interesting, so uh, the, the case study part will start with them. And similarly, there are uh, also some vulnerabilities uh, that haven't been fixed in time this year. So I hope we can continue the topic uh, maybe next year or next time. The first category we are going to discuss is the kernel stack based buckle or floor vulnerability. Um, 2020 98 99 set ROM profile. The patch information is here. Mm -hmm. And the reverse engineering shows that uh, the vulnerability is related to Broadcom's uh, OS independent layer, OSL uh, here. Uh, we can see uh, a function named the OSL arrow, and uh, the input parameter is a uh, uh, Broadcom arrow. And uh, uh, as we can see here, um, this uh, legacy code uh, uses byte-to-byte -byte assignment assignment instead of string uh, safe string copy functions. I, I think because it's a uh, legacy code, I think. Uh, a uh, compilation of this legacy code with IOKs must be a, a challenge. And, uh, and the root cause may be related to the, the, uh, the, the compiler or something. Um, and then the, the most important thing is uh, the vulnerable function mistakenly trusts the, the input parameter and treat it as the 
uh, exit condition of the assignment loop here. So um, here is the information where the kernel crashes. Uh, the current instruction is written and uh, RBP uh, at this point is, uh, uh, is pointed to uh, 8B8. Yeah, here, yeah, 8B8. And uh, it, this one should be return address, and this one should be uh, RS, uh, RBP. So uh, we can, that means we can control uh, RAP and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, RBP. So yeah, you can see here, uh, I already overwrite the, the RBP register. Um, and uh, here, there is no uh, kernel uh, connect, uh, canary protection in the stack. So I, I think it's uh, uh, related to the, the legacy code. Um, a, a frequent asked the question is, does stack-based buffer overflow vulnerability still make sense today? A good example comes from the Penguin team, uh, CVE 20, uh, 2019, uh, 8648. In that case, LLVM insert canary in a wrong position. Uh, another case worth mentioning is uh, this one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, exploitation of kernel stack-based buffer floor in the real world is not as straightforward as in the books, especially when you don't have a kernel debugger. So um, stack-based buffer floor vulnerability can still be seen today, especially in legacy code. And for 9899, the vulnerable function has no stack cookie protection. Uh, we can control local variable, RBP, and even IP register. Two years have passed. Uh, you might ask, um, are there still such high quality kernel stack based uh, overflow overwrite vulnerabilities? Definitely. This time we have the CVE 2022 uh, 32847. The vulnerability affects iOS 15.6, macOS monitoring, and uh, other platforms. Uh, 32847 is related to uh, Bluetooth profile and configure features. Um, in, in short, uh, stack-based variable are parsed between functions, but the vulnerable function mistakenly treat them as normal and the trusted inputs. Computing based on this trust can lead to serious problem. Mm, yeah, I, I have a, a, a panic information. Here's the information about the uh, kernel crash. We can say uh, RBX here is um, actually a, a stack-based variable and the processing of uh, parsing can be controlled. For example, the, the RCX, uh, we can control the, that value. So uh, it's a, it's a stack-based uh, uh, calculation and uh, uh, finally leads to uh, uh, kernel stack over, over read and over write. So for, for this case, I would say um, kernel stack over, uh, kernel stack overwrite vulnerability represented by uh, 32847 can often be found. The root cause is related to stack-based variables being passed and used for, for, for calculation or parsing. But the data in the, uh, uh, in the local variable is controlled by user mode or malicious uh, input. So, um, yeah, this, this is a root cause. And the, uh, the stack uh, canary solution, canary solution cannot solve all the problems. The next category is arbitrary memory write vulnerability. And the first case is uh, uh, CVE 2020, uh, 113. Um, yeah, here's the patch information. Uh, for example, iOS 14 and the uh, macOS Catalina. In short, um, the, the, the uh, build kernel space boundary condition 
cause this vulnerability. Reverse engineering uh, shows that there are two branches. Uh, one is one is uh, here. If the input parameter is from user mode, uh, it needs to enter enter here uh, the copy out branch. And if the uh, input parameter is from kernel mode, it's, uh, it needs to enter the memory move branch. So here, such boundary condition is critical. Uh, in my opinion, this is not time, not the time to do uh, freestyle. Um, as you can see here, the RDI register, the value, value in the RDI register can bypass that weld check, a check. So, um, so, so don't let the, the defensive ends show time uh, turn into a showstopper. And, and the core stack is like this. Uh, we, yeah, that means we, we uh, go to the memory move branch. And, uh, uh, but th this parameter can be controlled from user mode. Next, um, combined with kernel information disclosure vulnerability, a complete local EOP chain can be formed. Uh, a good information disclosure example I, I can share is the uh, 2020 uh, Here is a link if you are interested. So for uh, CVE 2020, uh, 130, I would say um, uh, this is a arbitrary memory write vulnerability caused by a boundary checking error. And uh, the, the value to be written is controllable or predictable. Uh, combined with kernel information disclosure vulnerability, a complete local EOP chain, uh, export chain can be formed. And the right primitive is stable and does not require heap manipulation. manipulation. Uh, the, uh, the, and the, the last one is the uh, interesting uh, part. This vulnerability affects hundreds of um, uh, Apple, uh, BCM, WM, w, w, WLAN core debugger handlers. Actually, uh, it's about 200 handlers. And uh, yeah, uh, two years have passed. Uh, are they still such high quality arbitrary kernel memory write vulnerabilities? Uh, definitely. This time we have the CVE 2022-26762 um, get Rx rate, um, also uh, affect, uh, affecting uh, iOS 15.5 and the uh, macOS monitoring. Um, yeah, for this case, uh, one sentence is enough to explain the root cause. The vulnerable function forgot to sanitize user mode pointer. Uh, or address. And I also listed the several uh, uh, functions should be should be called. Uh, on, when, uh, on Mac OS, iOS, and uh, FreeBSD platform, uh, we should use copy in and copy out. On Linux kernel, we should use uh, copy from user and copy to user. And on Windows kernel, um, we, we should uh, uh, use the prop for read and prop for write. Mm, yeah, here is the, the, the call stack. Um, in other words, uh, the kernel will write data to any address you provide. Uh, the, the RBX is a target address and the REX is a, it's a, a fixed value. Um, yeah, incredible in 2020, but the, it just happened. So summary of case number two. Um, Compared with uh, 113, the root cause of uh, 26762 is simpler. As a vulnerable function for, for gas to uh, sanitize user mode pointer, um, the, but this simple, simple and the stable kernel vulnerability are powerful. They are perfect for point one. Um, and for this case, the, the value to be written is fixed. Um, so because I am also a kernel developer, so uh, Kernel vulnerability caused by uh, copying, copy out, copy from user to user, copy for read, copy for write are very common. 
um, kernel developers should uh, uh, carefully check all the input parameters. Um, yeah, all all, uh, all the input are potentially harmful. The next uh, category is the most common um, kernel heap out of bounds read and write vulnerability. And I can uh, share with you two cases. Um, 2022, uh, 32, 837, and, uh, and 860. Uh, yeah, iOS and the Mac OS Monterey. Yeah, for the first one, uh, 32, 837, um, I can set the length to any data, uh, for example, ABCDEF. Um, and the, this is a, the, the test on the Intel based platform. And the cost stack is, uh, is related to uh, memory copy. And uh, yeah, this, this is a, a stack on Apple Silicon. Um, yeah, setting the length to, for example, that if uh, means the kernel is, is definitely going to die. Um, yeah, but th this kind of uh, uh, vulnerability is uh, very easy to be to be captured by a kernel debugger. But for this one, for the for the second one, um, 2020, 32860. Um, for this case, the total number of auto bounds is not enough to to cause a kernel panic. Uh, it's just a read uh, uh, several bytes over the uh, heap objects uh, or write to that uh, heap object. So in this case, we need the help of kernel address sanitizer. But be before that, we need to fix the, the, the panic problems in uh, kernel, cars and kernel, um, as mentioned in the second section. Okay, summary. Um, I would say this type of vulnerability can be easily captured by uh, kernel address sanitizer. And uh, the, the, the exploitation of the vulnerabilities usually requires skills uh, such as hip fentry. And I have a, a good kernel hip fentry example. Uh, ID is uh, CVE 2015-0057. Um, here is the link. And the root cause of this uh, vulnerability are related to a lot of reasons. Uh, for example, the lack of uh, effective input verification, logical errors, uh, integer overflow, yeah, and so on. The last case is a uh, uh, type confusion vulnerability. Um, yeah, Mon Monfrey and Big Sur uh, backed it. And uh, the function is related to uh, update broadcaster MI. So um, yeah, in short, um, the first parameter of the function uh, update broadcaster MI is defined defined as the um, Skywalker interface, and this uh, object, uh, the size of this object is very big. It's, it's greater than uh, six thousand and eight hundred bytes in hex, um, and I. I dumped uh, uh, that object. Uh, however, things get completed uh, when a function tries to support different subsystem or interface. Um, please note that the following uh, object is much uh, smaller than uh, 630. So we can see um, yeah, here, there are two different objects and uh, the, the value here is different because uh, it's a different uh, type. So five minutes, Mr. Wang, five minutes. Yep. Okay. Um, and therefore, type confusion means, this kind of type confusion means out of bound access. So um, yeah, because this one is a smaller object and uh, uh, it doesn't have uh, 6,000 bytes. So it's a uh, out of bound access and uh, out of bound read and write issue. Um, after reviewing uh, the patch of this one, uh, 26761, uh, I found there is a still a non-point dereference bug in the vulnerable function. Um, by the way, I found a lot of non-point dereference bugs. Uh, sometimes I have to report them because they uh, significantly slow down my fuzzing effort. 
Um, yeah, here's the, the summary for this case. Uh, callback functions, especially uh, those that support different architectures, interface or working modes, uh, and state machine and uh, exception handling need to be carefully designed. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, corner case matter, uh, security patch is worth auditing. Yeah. One more thing, um, uh, follow-up ID uh, 0706 is uh, related to kernel heap auto bounds right. And the follow-up ID uh, 3017 is related to arbitrary memory access. Uh, I reported them recently. Um, and for uh, 3017, uh, uh, as far as I know, this is the second time in two years or maybe three years uh, that the same function has been found to be vulnerable. Um, and here are other uh, good examples. Um, this one, 9834, uh, yeah, it's also Wi Fi subsystem. Uh, as far as I know, second time to be found vulnerable. And this one, 3912, uh, um, it's about uh, a, a Bluetooth HCI interface. It's a thir third time in history, the same function has been found to be vulnerable. So, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, uh, how, how, how to say, uh, some handlers uh, with complex logical will be introduced uh, uh, with new vulnerability every once in a while, uh, even if the old ones uh, have just been fixed. So, yeah. Yeah, the last part, uh, takeaways and the end. Um, from the perspective of you know, development, um, I would say Apple has made a lot of efforts um, and the security of macOS and iOS has been significantly improved. And uh, yeah, all inputs are potentially harmful. Um, as uh, kernel developers, uh, we should carefully uh, check all the input parameters. And the uh, uh, new features always means new attack surface. Um, yeah, ca callback, uh, exception handling, state machine need to be carefully designed. And from a uh, perspective of vulnerability research, um, I have listed uh, uh, six points, mm -hmm. um, and they have basically been uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, the, the last one is uh, yeah, from perspective of security engineering and vulnerability hunting. Uh, yeah, I would say if you have done uh, point from point one to point four, for example, uh, integrate interface and attack surfaces integrate uh, kernel address and tizer code coverage analysis tool and uh, uh, port useful tools to, to Apple Silicon platform. Um, yeah, uh, combined all, all available means such as reverse engineering, kernel debugging, uh, XNU resources, SDK, KDK, third party tools. Um, if you have done this or just started, you will find um, Apple did a lot of work, but uh, the results seem to be uh, similar to 2020. Um, but you know, um, we have seen, uh, we, have, we, we all have seen uh, Apple's and Apple Silicon's progress. So yeah, uh, let's keep going. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's my presentation. Thank you for your time. <laughs>